sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, Loveline. coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. What's happening there, Drew? Not much about you. You know, feeling good. Are you? Looking good. Going to bed at uh, 3 in the morning, you know. I'm all over the map. I'm going to get a schedule. I I went to bed at 12.30, got up at 3.30. No! Nice. Good time. (laughs) Then I got some more sleep later in the day, though. Really? Yeah, much to my amazement. What would you do? Paula Sahn show? Yeah. How did you know that? You told me that yesterday. uh, That's what I did. Is her last name Zahn? Z-A-H-N. Yeah. You know, you don't know if they're the, her, her name is Paul Azan yeah, yeah. or whatever the hell. Paula Azan. Right. All right. How'd that go? Good. Fine. Good mm-hmm. times. Well, CNN action? Yeah. What did you talk about? Alcohol and uh, heart disease. Yeah, yes. Turns out drinking's good. Right. I drank an entire yeah. bottle of red wine yesterday right. in celebration of that good news. Thing. I just, I yeah. get so frustrated with the press. They yeah. Yeah. They yeah. want to report headlines in, you know, this, this, these studies ask these really specific questions. Do people that drink different kinds of alcohol have less heart attacks? Not do they live longer, do they have heart disease, nothing. And mm-hmm. this, then, this, then the press, you know, read, runs the headlines. Oh, drinking's good for you, for your heart. You should drink more. Right. That's just, it's yeah. just so That's a million swagger. miles from those studies. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, but to be fair to me, when I hear the uh, headline, alcohol kills, I, I hear drink more. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> it, what should you be... Uh, women shouldn't be worried about heart attacks, should they? I mean, as a woman, what are you worried about? Give me the top two. Breast cancer. Is that one? Is that number That's one number as one. a woman? Mm-hmm. That's the number one killer of females? Uh, I don't know about... I don't think it's the number killer, one. Killer, 30% of women. What kills women, number one? It, 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 young women or older women? See what I'm saying? Older women, heart disease. Older women, Younger heart disease. Younger women, breast cancer. Older women... Uh, Women expire ultimately because of uh, heart disease. Well, so just the, like men. So the death certificates say. You know, when you get older, you sort of heart just, everything just yeah, goes right. You get a stroke, you get a pneumonia. But we're talking eighty plus. <clears throat> but uh, guys, what's their number one thing? Heart disease, hard, heart yeah. attack. Yeah, heart disease or just attack. I don't, I don't know the data off the top of my head. I probably probably heart disease. So if there's something that goes after the number one. <clears throat> thing now alcohol doesn't go after heart disease it goes after hearts heart attacks right right right. okay and the people for all we know the people that have the heart attacks live longer in those studies we we don't know it's just right it just looked at heart attacks period right so now let's uh get to the phones and uh speak to shannon 17 shannon yes what's up um I was just wondering, if after a guy comes, does that mean that they're, like, done for the night? Um, you're 17. How old's the guy? For me, it's the week, but, yeah, it could be the night. Adam's in his late 30s. Yeah. yeah. Most 18-year-olds, I'm though. done for the month. He's 17. Yeah, 17 year should be good uh, 30 minutes. It, be- yeah, because, like, we were, because he, mm-hmm. we were having sex, and yeah. it was just, like, a few minutes, you know, and we were going mm-hmm. out and everything, mm-hmm. and then he was like, oh, I already came. Um, I haven't had sex for a long time. I already came, and then he was like, then we were like done. And I was like, oh, that was nice. And then what happened? Like, then I just, I was like, fine. And so I just fell asleep. I was finished. I didn't want to even deal with it. Right. Well, if you get angry at the guys, he, he's not going to get it up again. That you can be sure of. Oh, well, I, di- I just didn't say anything. I was like, okay. And then I just. Well, don't say just okay. Just say, hey, come on, let's do it again. Well, give, give the guy a little break, then what yeah. did he do? She, uh-huh. went to, she went to sleep. She went, she, and he just went to sleep, too, or where was yeah, he? Yeah, he just curled up next to me and went to sleep. And mm-hmm. I just, I wasn't really sure if that was, like, the case or not. So I didn't want to, like, ask him because he was like, no, I can't get it up. How old you is know, he? You know, 17. What? Oh, okay, she well, hold on. very angry. Hey, sassy. <laughs> be bitching to me. I asked how old you were, and you were 17, and now I'm asking how old he is. You know, it doesn't make him no, I your exact I'd age. She said 17. No way. Yeah. No way. Yes. I did, because he said Adam's 30, and I yes. said, well, he's 17. Yeah. Oh, you didn't ask her. Well, uh, All right. Okay. I'm still wrong, anyway. but not as wrong as Drew would like to make me. <laughs> Drew's trying to gaslight, so I make him insane. I asked her how No, I did. I asked, and then she didn't answer me, and then I said something about you, and then she said, oh, he's 17. Yeah. Yep. That's what happened. Roll it back, Anderson. Wait Roll, it back. Roll it back. Roll it back. Here's how we know I'm wrong. Anderson is rolling it back. 
<laughs> if I was right, Anderson would be like, yeah, we don't have tape on that. But we know I'm wrong now because Anderson's making a move now for the that, computer. That he's rushing, running to the yeah. computer. <laughs> Gleefully heading for the computer. <laughs> I thought I said uh, I only, uh, you know, for me it's a month I got to wait. And you went, well, Adam's 38. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, is that, that what it was? In there I asked her the age. I did. Oh, okay. Are we going to hear it? All right. Well, let's keep going with it. Right. Let's keep going with it. And then, uh, all right, Shannon, I apologize then okay, if uh, that's, that's, that's what you said. But now, it, here, here's the thing. First off, how are you two sleeping over? Who's, 17. Where's par whose parents are where? They were there. Oh, and they're all right with it? It was on New Year's. His parents? Yeah, they were... We were just... Have you been boyfriend and girlfriend for a long time? No. It's just kind of a fling thing. Well, what about your parents? They're, they're cool with you sleeping over at the guy's house? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Your dad around? Yeah. <laughs> He knows about this? They, well, no. They don't know that I like, have sex and stuff. But, but they, you're 17. You're sleeping over at the guy's house. I know. That he, That's a translation that means sex. But, like, my mom, she trusts me and everything, and she's put me on the pillow and stuff. And she, yeah. You know, just be smart about it if you ever do make the decision. All right. Okay. All right. Well, look, are you into this guy? You, you just call yeah. him a fling. Yeah, I am. And But, like, we weren't really set into each other or anything, and it was kind of like, you know, we'd been drinking that night and stuff. And Okay. Well, well he'd been you need drinking. To, you need to go twice with this guy. Yeah. And he needs to do a lot of oral sex. All right. Anderson, you got to her saying she was, uh, he was 17 to me. Mm -hmm. Do I have her saying that? I don't, I'm not sure exactly what the question is. Or do we have me asking her? Yes, we yes. do. All right. Do we have her answering? All right. Here it is. Actually, twice. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm, my I'm mind's sure. all over the place. Oh, I did. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, oh. You're 17. How old's the guy? For me, it's the week, but... Yeah, it could be the name. Adam's in his late 30s. Yeah, <laughs> most 18-year-olds, though. done for the month. He's 17. Yeah, 17 year should be All right, all right, but to be fair to me, to be fair to me, it her answer came quite a bit after... Uh, after the, I asked, we went on the sidebar with you. And, right, I yeah. I didn't think we got an answer yeah. to it. All right. all right. But we did. Yes, yes. Uh, Peter? Yeah? You're 14? Uh-huh. What's up there, buckaroo? <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah. really 14? Yeah. All right. Yeah. There's there's a handful of fourteen yeah, year olds that sound like this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, there are. What's up, buddy boy? Uh, yeah, uh, I can breathe air through my butt and then, like, fart really, really loud. Well, you called the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if you'd called like the homework hotline or something like that, this skill would be uh, frowned upon. Mm -hmm. But not here. It's embraced. Well, at, least, at least go unappreciated. Yes. All right. I would like to hear the air going in as well as the air coming out. Right now. <laughs> no, let's say this time next week. Okay. I'd like to hear it now. Sure. It might take... Hold on. Okay. Okay. Oh. You can't really hear it coming in, but you can definitely hear it coming out. I'd like to hear... I'd like to try to hear it coming in. Okay. Well, it's already in. Okay. Well, let's hear it come out then. Okay. Sure. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but this time I like to hear it going in. That's just a whoopee cushion. Okay, wait. Yeah. I swear it's not. Most okay. of my friends have heard me. Okay. Okay, hold on. Most of his friends have heard it. <laughs> well, then you know it's true. <laughs> oh, that was going in. <laughs> you see, I always know it's that because it's, it's sort of sporadic. <laughs> You know what I mean? There is a couple stages to it. I understand. It's not that one. Yeah, like when you do the fart thing, you just kind of go. Yeah. But this always one always goes. There's always some weird sporadic spasm, secondary spasm of gas at the end. Peter. Yeah. You must be quite a hit with the ladies. Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They dig you, right? They do. All of them. Well, my friend, you've been touched by the hand of God. You yeah, must. Oh, you, now let me yeah, explain. Let me explain something, Peter. Mm -hmm. You're special, <laughs> and and with that comes. That's what my teachers tell me. Yeah, it, with that comes a responsibility. You understand? Mm -hmm. You cannot abuse your power. Yeah. All right, my my child. It must be used for good. It must be used for good. Okay, Drew. Is there any like medical explanation? 
or anything like that? How right you now? guys do it? No, I never actually witnessed this uh, sort of in person, so I'm not quite sure what you guys are doing. Yeah, uh, I know like well, another person who can do it. Yeah, we've heard this before. It's been a couple years though since we've had yeah. a performance, so has it? Give me, give me one more, Pete. Okay. Hold on for the road. All right, buddy. This one's for. Hold on. All right. Yeah, that's for its first buddy. Hold on. <laughs> Suddenly, it's okay to use names. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's how you know it's real, too, Drew. Why? You wouldn't get two or three hold ons. You know what I mean? Like, you go, uh, you go, give me another one. The guy go, yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, right, right. Right? Yeah, they're always going, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, hold, you're, okay. you're just like <laughs> shifting. The phone goes down there. Nothing's happening. The stars haven't aligned. It happens so a little phones too come quick. Back. You know how that part of your body it doesn't respond to skeletal muscle command? It's not like moving your arm. Yeah. It's like when you and Ray used to fire water out of your butts. Mm-hmm. You'd, have to, you'd, have to, you'd start, and then it would sort of be on its own time frame. Uh yeah yeah if you hang on to it too long yeah you lose you lose it I see the ability to control it I see you see what I'm saying yeah you know we've we've suddenly gained some popularity in the thirteen fourteen year old I was attacked in my kid's school by a bunch of thirteen year olds really yeah it is a little bit weird I think we learned today how to put condoms on a cucumber I said that must have been uncomfortable that must have been fun at school that's yeah. what they learned yeah really yeah. Donovan. Yeah. You're 16? Yep. What's up, buddy? Um, my girlfriend has recently uh, started pushing me away uh -huh. because uh, on Monday she went in the doctors and they did some tests on her and she has uh, some brain thing going on with her where she has like uh, imbalance and chemicals in her brain. Uh huh. And uh, she thinks it's because she's been on cocaine for like three years now. Oh, boy, how old is she? She's 16 also. She's been doing it since um, the end of seventh grade. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hmm. But I, I actually talked her out of, like, stop or like stopping. I talked her into, like, stopping it about two weeks ago. Mm hmm Well, so, she's, she's not going to be able to just stop. Well, she's going through a rehab clinic here locally. Good. And uh, she's getting help through that. She's been off for 20 days now. So well, let her let her be. If if you want to participate, maybe go to some codependency meetings or something. But she needs mm. to focus on her recovery because this is a life threatening problem. What do you mean she's pushing you away? She's like, I don't know. She's refusing to like come near me, and she's like, mm -hmm. she doesn't like talking. What's she say? She just she ignores me, and it, she'll talk to me, but she like she won't talk about that because. And she's she's real closed up about it to like everybody. About her program? No, about like everything, like her entire life, because there's been a whole bunch of crap that's happened to her. All right. Well, like she was abused when she was a kid. Right. Everything else. All right. Well, that's fine. Let let her deal with it in her own time, in her own way. Well, in, I'm, in I'm just afraid she's gonna hurt herself because like me and. Uh, hey, Donovan, you're 16. She's got a whole team of professionals following her now. If you if she says something that really is of a concern, report it to the team. But just make sure she's following their direction. That's all you need to do. Just make okay. sure she's doing what they tell her to do. Hey, Donovan? Yeah? Uh, this may be the end of you two. Uh, I'm thinking that, too. And and you know what, Donovan? I, I know you, you want to get in. You feel like you want to fight for her. Fix her. But she's she's got to fight for herself right now. Well, really, what he wants to do is keep her sick. I mean, and, no, he isn't really... Yeah, I, at this point, I don't even care if Good. the relationship lasts. I just want to make sure she's safe. Yeah, yeah well, well she's, she's being taken care of. She's in good hands. Just and make sure she's following directions. You need to take care of... Uh, Donovan needs to take care of uh, Adam. <laughs> Donovan that goes for all of you. Donovan needs all to make sure he doesn't get another relationship like this, take care of another. That's guy. what Donovan's got to do. And and listen, ultimately, this girl is a is 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 a project that is too big for you. Yeah. I mean, uh, really, <clears throat> you know, I, I know I make all my horrible uh, car analogies, but um, this is it, it is is a sixteen year old boy. You would love to get yourself like a 1960s Jag with all the f spoked wheels and knockoffs on the rims. The Shaguar. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you want Austin Powers' car, mm -hmm. but the reality is that'd be about the cruelest joke anyone could ever play on you. Yeah. You don't have you, the money to fix it. You don't have it, the tools. It would, no, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't drive handle it. it. You just couldn't handle yeah. it. 
And it, it would be what you wanted, though, more, more, more than the uh, Festiva. <laughs> How high is Ford with their fiestas and their festivas? You're, you're naming cars after taco salads. So why, why don't you just break down and name one of your cars taco salad? It couldn't sound any cheaper. I stay away from the Mexican names with the cars. There's always, always trouble. Granada. Yeah, El Camino wasn't bad. Yeah. All right, because so here's the thing. Uh, this is a handful for all, all you 16, 17-year-old guys who are listening, who are dating women who were abused, and they're strung out, and they're hooked on stuff, and they're acting out, and they're cutting on themselves. It's, it sounds great, but you're in way over your head. Just find yourself some nice, boring chick who wasn't abused, and uh, let the abused ones get their help. Thank you. What'd you belch up there, Trey? A little uh, gorgonzola. Nice. Blair? Hey. Hi, Blair. Hey, you're 16. What's up? Um, okay, well, I've had this girlfriend for the past five months, Girl, and... Girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I found out from friends that she had herpes, but she never told me, and... She, ha she has herpes. Yeah, that mm -hmm. she has herpes, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I can get it, because I finally brought it up to her, like, three months into the relationship, and she was like, oh, yeah, well, I was going to tell you, but blah, blah, blah. So she said that she can only give it to me if she's having her outbreaks. This, this is your, your girlfriend? Yeah. You're having sex with her? Yeah. So she, 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 well, she's no, like, I haven't ever touched her, you Cooch? know what, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've been too scared. Well, that's the only way she's going to give it to you is if you touch her vagina. And I can't get it any other way? No, not well, unless she has the that, rash somewhere Is that the else. kind of herpes she has? What? Where is, where is the herpes? Where is it? On her vagina. Okay, well, you have to touch the sores to get it. Because I... Touch like, the region, anyway. Like, I've seen it before, and there's, like, no... Like, is there any way that I, like, cannot get it if she just is not on her outbreak? Yeah, sometimes, but it, it can, it, it's hard to tell when they're contagious. Well, you're still at risk. And it's, you're going to go to your mouth, right? Yeah. Well, well, maybe. Are, are you, uh, or to the strand, but are are you a uh, lesbian there, Blair? I don't know. Like I really, I'm really confused. I yeah. Just, oh, this is not a this is not a romantic relationship. Well, it, it, it is. is. It is. Like I like I really like her a lot. Like I think I love her, but I mean, like I really don't know. I'm only 16. Yeah, yeah. that's a good answer. What happened to you? Anything weird? Not that I know. Of. Your dad didn't freak you out. No. You love him. Mm -mm. No. No. You don't love your dad. I thought you said something else. Yeah, I love him. He's yeah. kind of a jerk, but whatever. What did he do? Nothing. What He's just he really strict. Mm -hmm. All right. Religious? Hmm? Is he religious? Um, nobody wants me to be. Oh. Well, you'll show him. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you're only, with, you're only with women now? This one girl? You don't have any boys? No, I actually dumped a boy for this girl. Okay. But. You're in the 10th grade, huh? Uh, 11th. 11th, okay. And she might be exposing you to herpes without even telling you, huh? Well, maybe she was preparing to tell you before you touched that area. Wait, how did how did Blair find out? She told, well, she someone told her she brought it up and she uh, said she was going to tell her. Yeah, my close friends told me that she got it because... All right. Well, here's the deal with herpes. You can't tell when you're contagious. If you have an outbreak, you're definitely contagious. If you don't have an outbreak, you can still be transmissible. But it's it's less. It's less. Did Does she do stuff to you? Yeah. Did she give you oral sex? Yeah. Is that good? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're tough nut to crack, Blair. What do you mean? You don't like it that much? No, I do. I don't know. I, I'm just like, I'm really prudent. I feel like I, like, I think I was like raped when I was little and I just don't know about it or something. There's just something wrong. Hmm. Maybe you're just getting into stuff too early. Maybe you're just not ready for it. But I'm 16. How come, like, how can all these other girls be, like, having sex when they're, like, 12? And I'm, like... Yeah, though they were sexually abused. <laughs> that's when they were getting raped. Yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the irony of all this. Maybe you're normal and you're trying to act like people who have problems. Yeah, because... Why don't you take it easy? Just slow down a little bit. Mm. Why not, Blair? Why not? Well, What's you up don't with like you chicks? Yeah. What's up with women? I mean, Gu Guys have sex because they have to. Oh, they're easy, driven. Easy, easy, partner. No, but, I mean, easy. seven old males are driven like a, you know... Yeah, well, they walk around with, you know, boners all through their homeroom class. and you know, <laughs> the, Hey, you're laughing. That's all they think about. That's all they think about. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it is. And that's it. Is. it. And that's why, they, that's why they have sex. 
So for you to go, oh, I better do this because everybody else is doing it. What the hell? No. Come on. It's so ironic. It's like teenage boys need sex in a in a sort of way. I, Biblical. I, I mean, it's it's it, they're compelled. Yeah. They're compelled. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> they're compelled. Oh, oh no reverb. my reverb doesn't work. <laughs> I used it once in eight years. Uh, I thought it worked like ten minutes ago. Oh, I got to plug into this jack, right? right wrong jack. Oh, let me try that again. They're compelled. <laughs> Damn reverb. Uh, reverb. Okay, here's the thing. It, it, whereas women are sort of, uh, they could take it or leave it. Some like it more than others. Yeah. Uh, they, it's, it's, it's there for the taking. You know what it really reminds me of? It, it reminds me of my work. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to work. Everyone else is excited about it. That's true, but yeah. that's not that's not the example I was going to use. There's food everywhere. Oh yeah, everywhere, right. everywhere, yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Yes, yes, I know. I've been on those sets. Jimmy's office is filled with like raisinets and fresh fruit and baskets everything. Everywhere. Baskets everywhere. Daniel's office filled with food everywhere. It, then, then, then the kitchen. Then you go into the kitchen. It's it's filled with well, food. Then, then there's somebody down there cooking stuff, and then then there's lunch. It's nonstop, just food everywhere, yeah. and I'm not even hungry anymore. But yeah. I am not going to pass that bowl of miniature Mr. Good bars for a fifteenth time without dipping into it. It's just, it's, I'm not going to do it. I'm not hungry. Yeah, I'm not compelled to eat. I mean, I'm not hungry. I'm yeah. just, it's all around me. What yeah. am I going to do? So yeah. it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll eat a few of these. You're like a chick. This is what chicks are with sex. Yeah. And what the dudes are is like what I was when I was swinging a hammer, which was, ah, somebody dropped a raisin, and everyone <laughs> to dive on it and wrestle. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. <sighs> Good times. All right. Let's uh, take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to Grace. 17 wants to know if a girl can get pregnant if she's on her period. We'll tell her and you after this. <laughs> Hey everybody, Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Yeah. Let me hit that reverb switch again. Hey, hey, guys and gals out there, Radio Live. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. Uh, Westwood One. All right. Yeah. Now, I think I got to plug my mic into yeah, that. Yeah, that's chair. what you got to do. Go yeah. ahead, plug away. All right. You ready, Drew? Oh, oh Anderson, me. Anderson. Are you really, really wanting me to do this? Plug okay. Now we You'll see why I never plug it. Cause of the yeah, buzz. I know. Well, guess what? Now, the buzz is over here on this one. No, I hear the buzz. The buzz is on this one, too. It's bad. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> I'm going to do the rest of the show in reverb, Drew. No, sir. Grace, you're 17. You're on line six. Oh, oh you hung up on five. Oh, screw five. Grace? Yeah? What's up? Nothing. I was wondering if a girl can become pregnant while she's on her period. Uh, girl's vagina is like a sports car. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Y yeah, she can, Grace. It's possible. Okay. It's not likely, but it's possible. It's possible. What's the percentage of it happening? 22%. Did you have a unprotected sexual intercourse? Yeah, I did. When? 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 Drew, you're getting in on my reverb. I can hear that. Stop it. I don't like it. When? Um, about three days after I started my period. Three days. No, I understand. Relative to this moment, when did that happen, the intercourse? Um, the 28th of December. All right, so a while ago. Because yeah. why didn't you get the morning after pill? Um, I don't know. I didn't. That would have been the smart thing to do. Yeah. And really, you should do that whenever in the cycle you have an unprotected... Naivete! You're amusing yourself. <laughs> yes. No, but uh, you're probably okay. nothing you can do at this point anyway, Grace. You're probably okay, and uh, you know, get a pregnancy test in two weeks and just be sure. But uh, you should be fine. Hey, hmm. I get some tape, put it on there. We do the entire lightning round and reverb. Yeah. Because I know you're way too lazy to hold it. <laughs> yeah. I I I, yeah. I don't think we need tape. How I think dare you. I think I can just wedge something and let's see what it sounds like. Blah 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 blah. blah. Drop trap. Oh, we're all going to be in such a hell. <laughs> all right. Tonight we do a special reverb 
version of uh, the lightning round. Oh, uh, great. We got to remember to do that, Drew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be sure to remember. <clears throat> Good times. Let's speak to Dan, who's uh, 22. Dan? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I'm 22, and I've never been able to maintain an erection with a woman. I can do it when I masturbate, and I'm seeing a therapist. But my question is, is it possible for it to be physical? I need medication. Well, medication would help it. Certainly, things like Viagra are real good at helping people sustain an erection. Do you well, get real even even at this young an age? That's possible. It's possible. Do you get real anxious and nervous when you're with a woman? No, I don't, and that's why it's very frustrating. Do you have any medical problems? No, not that I know of. You want medication? No. Have you been evaluated from a medical standpoint? No, I haven't yet. All right, that, w that would be a reasonable thing to do. But the, the fact that you're able to maintain erection and masturbate normally suggests that it probably is a psychological problem, right? Cause that's what I thought, but that's, I, was, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you if, if it's, it's always possible. A, it's possible that there's a medical component to this, and it's always important no. to get that evaluated. Yeah, what kind of a doctor? Just go to my regular doctor. Regular doctor, doctor generalist. No, any doctor can do this for you. Yeah, okay. but it's probably not because everything's hooked up and it works. It works when it's not confronted by a female, though, right? Exactly. How yeah. often are you beaten off? A, a lot. <laughs> well, maybe that's the problem. Maybe beaten no, because I, I, I've, I've tried, you know, stopping to see if then it'll work, and it doesn't. <laughs> what do you, you, you yeah. have a girl? Yeah, I have a girlfriend. You do. Mm -hmm. And oh. it, you cannot maintain an erection with her ever? Not to the point of ejaculation, no. So oh. you, you're able to penetrate and then you mm -hmm. lose the erection after a while? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hmm. How long before you lose the erection? Um, sometimes pretty quick, sometimes not so quick, but quick enough for it to be frustrating. How many minutes on average? How many? Oh, um, I would estimate about... Um, Six, seven minutes? I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay. Right. Two, three. Yeah. Drew, <laughs> Drew has difficulty comprehending this because he's a man of supreme passion. <laughs> supreme. You understand? Uh, so, okay, but now what about oral sex? At that, I can't get to the... I can't... It, that doesn't work for me either. <laughs> no, no erection with the oral sex? It may get erect for a very short time, but oral sex is probably even less... No. It, but you get, you, you're, you're telling me you don't get anxious. You're not aware of any symptoms, any feelings that you're having. I, I, um, I sometimes may experience a little bit of physical kind of like tensing anxiety, but not too much. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, I'm excited about sex. I'm ready. I'm, you know, it's not anything like I'm nervous about the experience at all. Gay? I'm sorry? Are you gay? No, I'm not gay. All right. Maybe your penis is. <laughs> you ever, is it, ever s catch it uh, sniffing other guys' asses? No, I, I've never been even remotely attracted oh, to Oh, okay. Because one, one time right, you, I took my uh, penis to the park. Oh, oh well, that must have been a disaster. Well, All I, the other I, penises are like, I, 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 I. get it some exercise, let it uh, run off some of that ball out, weight. Dig you know? for some gophers. Tried to get them so, uh, I think, holes. You know, this is when I was living in an apartment, yeah. and uh, I didn't like the idea of keeping my penis, even though it was a small penis, <laughs> cooped up in the apartment the whole time. You know, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think it, was, it, was it wasn't an indoor penis. What are you going to do? Yeah, it wasn't. No, well, clearly. It was small, it but not, in, not indoor penis. It was not raised as an indoor penis. I understand. On the other hand, you know, now that I live up in the hills, I don't want to let it out, especially oh, you, at night, because there's coyotes. Well, you also get all those cattails in there and stuff. He gets caught in it. It's not so much about that and, you know, tracking semen onto the carpet and that kind of stuff, but it's it's more about, like, I, I've had some friends that had their penises eaten off by coyotes. You know, they didn't come they wow. come in at night. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's bad times. you got the problem up at your place, too. We have, we have, we have bobcats. Yeah, bobcats. Bobcat uh, penises, no match, if, even uncircumcised, no match for a bobcat. You know, sometimes you can sort of decoy with the, with the, with the free pews. It doesn't ah. take that and run. The foreskin heads that way. The penis goes that way. The bobcat's got to make a decision. Yeah. Well, anyway, I took my penis uh, to the park. Oh, yeah? And, uh, and like I said, I was just, I was just trying to sort of tire it out so uh, when I got home, I could get some rest. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's nothing worse than when the penis is up and you're trying to get some sleep. And oh, it wakes you up to go in the morning and stuff. Yeah, you take it out. It's an outdoor right. penis. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, and uh, I went and uh -huh. got a drink of water. Yeah. I was going to just finish up with Dan. The penis <laughs> found it uh, sniffing uh, this dude's ass. 
Oh, well, that must have been very disturbing. It's embarrassing. It's no, embarrassing. no, I mean, more than embarrassing. What do you care? It's, I think, I mean... It's, it's embarrassing. It's the implication. All I, say. I know. Yeah. All right. So, Dan, you I don't... Had put, I had to put the penis down some months later. Oh, it's a bad, yeah, depressing painful. story. Yeah. Pretty painful. And I doubt you beat it for a while before, and, for, <laughs> yeah. uh, Dan, before I put it down. Yeah. Dan, Dan, here's the deal. You're, you're doing all the right stuff. You're seeing a therapist. Go have a thorough medical evaluation to make sure there's not some medical component, whether it's vascular, prostate, endocrinologic, something else that just has, you know, neurologic, something. But undoubtedly, it's it's emotional. Mm. Laura. Laura. I'm here. You're 19. Oh. Yep. What's up? Um, I've been smoking weed probably for um, pretty close to two years now mm -hmm. and I feel like um, I don't know r recently I just haven't really been enjoying it that much and that's what I that's all that's what always happens with pot it starts to wear off start getting a little pa anxious a little paranoid from it depressed start having yeah. dif start having difficulty but, um, completing tasks like I've noticed um, certain personality changes in me like mm -hmm. Since I've started, sm or like you know, since I started, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering, like, um, you know, if I were to stop, would my personality change back, or is it like? What do you have ir irritability and that sort of thing? Um, yeah, just I mean, like, I'm. I find that I'm like really lazy now. I don't really have a sense yeah. of money management anymore. Uh, I no, it, 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 there, there's ab absolutely yeah, no doubt that it, it, it blocks though the the initiation of motor activity. You have lots of good intentions, but they never get actualized in any certain sense of going in a going getting up and doing something. That's okay. what pot does. It blocks that mechanism neurologically. So yeah, you went, you went, after about six months, things do tend to return to normal. But that first six months can be very treacherous, and you really do need to be monitored during that. I would suggest you get involved with MA. And marijuana addiction is not something you can just stop. You you will go back, uh, and it's yeah. really tough to stop too. So go go get involved with MA. What is that noise? I don't know. He stopped it. Yeah, I did hear some conversation. Yeah, some like, like all right. But, so, but Laura, take take this seriously. It, it, it can be, you're at a sort of a critical crossroads in your life, trying to get stuff together here. You're young. D don't let this destroy you right now. Okay. All Thank right. you. Bye. Good times. Uh, let's take a break, Drew. Yeah, I gotta go pee. Ooh, early. We've. Are you okay? Uh, it's about time. You must really been upset about that penis episode. I, I had mixed feelings about putting it down. I oh, ten thirty six. Wow. Well, don't, don't we normally, aren't we supposed to go at 37? 38. 38 is when yeah. we're supposed to go? Yeah, it's never happened, by the way. Oh. Have we ever gone at 38 ever? We have? Twice. Nice. Thank you. Okay. No? I thought it was supposed to be 37. If we talk about it for another 51 seconds. No, let's go. All right. All right. All right, we'll be back. Hey, yo, love line, I'm Adam. It is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Drop a trowel. <laughs> Drew. Yeah. I'm this close <laughs> to drop and trowel. Yeah. Woo! Tell you what. Mmm. Yeah. All right. We're ready to roll here, Drew? Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> oh, no. Let's do it. Five, five. Let's go, guys. Doink and We're trying to doink. Get five. There we go. Hey, hello? Hello? What's, What's your name? Evan. What's up, Evan? Uh -huh. I like shows that call the people caller. What's happening, caller? <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Marlene. Caller. Caller? Caller? You, caller, this is host. What's up, Marlene? Hey. Hey. Hi. Um, I'm going from Glendale. Um, yeah, I was kind of wondering, like, where do you kind of draw that line where it's, like, not, like, just discipline anymore and it's kind of like child abuse? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a hard line to, it's not a hard and fast uh, sort of. Well, well, we'll decide who's you, doing what to you. If, if listen, if they. Do it in a way where there's an intent to hurt, if they do it with an object, and if it's something that's done routinely, especially, that's abuse. Okay. Yeah. Um. There's really no reason to hit a child. The reality is 
there's absolutely no situation in which there aren't much better and more effective ways to discipline kids. Yeah, yeah. tell me about it. Yeah, um, but like seriously, I don't know what to do anymore because I'm like 15, you know. Mm -hmm. I like tower over my mother, and you know she kind of gave me a smack, and I'm all really. Yeah, and yeah. Right. I don't really know. It's like what is, what is she? Is she what? Mexican? What is she? Armenian? What is she? Well, um, she's gotta have a race. She's got one of those smacking mom races. Yeah, well, just for this, we're gonna call it Mexican because all Hispanics are Mexican. So there's no, no cookies in my box. Yeah. 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 Where is she from? South we're America? Nicaraguan. Nicaragua. <laughs> we're Nicaraguan. <laughs> I used to work with some guys who were uh, Nicaraguan. They would always have trouble with that last part. They go, "Hey, man, I'm Nicaraguan." <laughs> We're a great bunch, though. Yeah, good bunch. The, you know, the Nicaraguans, uh, they, don't, they don't like it when you confuse them with the Mexicans, and the Mexicans don't like it when you confuse them with the El Salvadorians. But uh, us yeah. round eyes, yeah. us gringos, we, we don't know. We don't care. It's all the same. Yeah, see, you know what? I'm going to start a movement, and we have to just make it either all Puerto Rican or all Mexican. Yeah, well, here's... <laughs> uh, you know what, Marlene? I wanna, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Here's the way I'm going to do it. Uh, east of the Mississippi, Puerto Rican. West of the Mississippi, Mexican. That's it. I'll get away with all these uh, South Americans and the Central Americans and the Nicaraguans and the Sandinistas yeah. and all. Hey, let's lose all that can, can stuff. Can we do the same for the Asians? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Confusing. Chinaman. It's all Chinaman. Yeah. Okay. How about, how about what, do we do, you. what do we do about the, the Americans and Canadians? They're fine, just wide. They're cracker. American just whitey. Cheers? I don't know. No, no, it's just that's just whitey. <laughs> they don't, we don't need to make it make a distinction with them. I personally don't ask around. Are you Canadian? So it's not yeah. an issue. Yeah, you hate Canadians? No, she doesn't ask around. She doesn't know. I thought she said she hated Canadians. No, no. not an issue. She and said. don't care enough to ask. Either. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. All right. So uh, anyway, you're uh, Nicaraguan, and um, your mom, even though she's little, she's uh, feisty. Yeah. It is. They got chili pepper in their blood, those people. I suggest you put a limit on Tell her to just cut it, to make it very clear. Stop. Because my dad, you know, he doesn't lay a finger on me. And then she gives my dad a guilt trip about, hey, it's your fault. Yeah, of course. Well, you and then it, anything. in the Look culture. And the they call me to sympathize it. Look at you. And the, she gives my dad a guilt trip. And then I'm, yeah. Why, the, why is Marlene so like I her? like her, yeah. <laughs> really and see, like the her. Latin culture, the male... The father's not disciplinarian. He's a he's sex burner. <laughs> and the mother actually does the discipline. I see. This is what I've learned. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. So more of the Marlene's... Yeah. <coughs> yep. And Nick, ah, your dad is your boyfriend and your, your mom is uh, your prison guard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. that's good. That's All right. Good. So you doing okay there, uh, Spicy? Um... I guess. I don't know. If, but Marlene, if your mom will not stop, call Department of Social Services. Yeah, but I feel like a retard. Like, yeah, my mom, get, get this, she smacked me. And no, no, yeah. that's not a retard. That's just fine. She not, it's not too she's smacking She won't stop. Does she? Do, what about getting your dad involved? You know, my dad, coolest guy in the world. And kind of like, it's all like, his logic, it's all like, you know your mom's insane. Leave yeah. her alone. Yeah. Well, that's not, not leave bad. For a week, yeah, yeah. So, like, leave her alone that week. Not bad logic on his part. <clears throat> However, obviously, she won't leave you alone. So, mm -hmm. there's a problem. You know the sound, why don't you, uh, why don't you predict? When, uh, when, you're, when your mom whacks you, does she go, hi? I wish. <laughs> it would be some comic relief. Oh, really? She kind of mouths off and talks about the revolution and how I don't know how hard it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, no. oh, oh, oh. A wonderful, wonderful situation here. Yeah, that'll, be, dad, yeah. that'll be another dad. 200 years to get that out of the generation. What's your dad do? Job? Yeah. Um, I, this is going to be shocking, earth-shaking. I know what my dad does. He's a photo technician. All right. Great guy. Yeah, you got to get your dad. And well, that's good because you'll be good with the, you'll be good with men. Yeah, knows how, 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 how sort of uh, appealing she is because she likes her dad. Yeah. You know I mean, she's got a nice sort of interaction with her. Yeah. She likes men. Yeah. She likes her dad. She yeah. likes men. But although, I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, my dad's kind of a puss. Kind of. That's kind of, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's like a little more than kind of a puss. Want to just put, say, colossal and put it in reverb? Yeah. <laughs> I'm too lazy to to uh, grab well, this lean thing. Lean forward, but but, he, but 
I, I wonder about these dads. Is this sort of hang out? And the moms are freaking on the kids. Yeah, some and some girls would uh, develop some very intense resentments against dad for not helping them. Well, for not interfering. What's up? I mean, yeah. and uh, Drew, I don't know if you got this situation either on the home front, but uh, this crap goes on over to my, my house. I lay the law down. Mm -hmm. I uh, I get up or lean forward and start poking people with the stick that I use to get their attention. I'm, I'm going to actually get up off the sofa. But I, get, I use my attention stick to get... I, there's no way I would let uh, my wife start beating it's the crap out of my kids. And I'm sort of sitting there and kids coming to me going, Mom's beating the crap out of me. Yeah. And I'm going, well, you know how she is. Just yeah. stay out of... I just go in there and start yelling at her. Yeah. Doug? Hey, you guys. How you doing? <laughs> What's happening, Doug? Hey, not too much. Hey, man, I wish you guys were around when I was a teenager. Yeah. Are, you, are you using a telephone or a, a, a microphone? That's a regular telephone. I was, I'm at my job right now. Wow, you sound that. good. <laughs> Whoa. You sound real good, buddy. That's a telephone company. Wow. And we got high-quality equipment around here. No kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's move over there. Forget this Western are, One crap. Are you calling from the telephone company? Yeah. Jeez, that's nice. Hey, thank you. Sweet. We could talk all night, buddy. Yeah, I don't think they're going to pay me for that, though. Oh, okay. Marlene and Doug, we're, we're, we're styling. <laughs> what is your question? Hey, I got a little uh, test of your infinite wisdom there, Adam. Mm-hmm. I'm going to test your car knowledge here. All righty. Shelby Daytona Coupe. Mm-hmm. Something uniquely special about that car. You know what it is? Didn't we just see one the other day? Nah. No, no. Isn't that what we were mucking around with over at the car show? No, I didn't see a Daytona Coupe. What was that? that? Uh, oh, there were the three Shelbys there. Oh, that, that was a 427. Uh, yeah, the old Daytona Coupe. Well, what's unique about it in terms of... Historical. Well, it, it came between the Cobras and the uh, GT40s. No, 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 not that part. What did it do that, that made it uh, such an American car? Well, in, in terms of winning it things? It was built. Yeah, I, there I mean, you go, winning. There you go, winning. What did it do? First to win, a, like a G. Oh, uh, it, it was the only it was the only American car, the first American car to win, like, the sports car championship. Uh, close. World Manufacturing. Uh, World Manufacturing oh, Championship, yeah. You're close, man. Yes. Yeah, well, it, it, it uh, caught on fire at uh, <laughs> 24 hours of Le Mans. And, it was a wood car. It was all built off of wood. You know, with the aluminum uh, body on there. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty hot car. You caught, oh, yeah. on, caught on fire, Le Mans? It caught on fire, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they were only six of those, Bill. I was just wondering about your, you know, you're, you're pretty darn uh, knowledgeable, so. Oh, uh, thanks there, Doug. Yes, I, I do know a fair amount of those uh, Shelby Daytonas. Uh, it's a nice car. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know, the thing that's crazy about those uh, race cars, and uh, I know everyone has these sort of fantasies, go back in time kind of stuff, mm. but... Uh, yeah, they built, like, six of those cars. They've done us a lot of cars. And then they campaigned them in, like, I don't know, 65 or 66 or something like that. Maybe 64 or 65. And then they only ran them for one year. And it won the uh, won the manufacturer's championship. And then, then they got rid of them. And, and then so they had to sell them, you know. And, and, you know, selling an old race car is like selling an old race horse, you know, like, Hey, it ain't ain't it much good a couple of years later. I mean, technology races on. Right. So they sell, they they, they give them away. You Ugh. know, they're like, I don't know, we'll take uh, forty five hundred bucks or whatever. Now they're worth four million dollars. And we're not talking about you know Napoleonic days. Right. We're just talking about you know later sixties. Yeah, Forty years ago. You, you could have got one of those cars in nineteen seventy for uh, ten grand. Ugh. You know what I mean? That's three million. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Melissa? Yeah, hi. You're 19? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, um, <laughs> is Dr. Drew there? No, I'm here. Okay. Um, uh, well, how should I start? I kind of have this problem. I wouldn't consider myself promiscuous, but, uh, kind of. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm 19. I like to go out, have a good time. I consider myself or think I am attractive, but I develop these attachments really quickly to different guys, and <laughs> they're not calling me back. And it's... it's <sighs> you having sex with these guys? <laughs> yeah. And more than that, I, I become obsessed. Oh, I thought and she was going to say I, anal. I seem to think that I'm in love, and I know it's, you know, psychological and 
sex is very emotional for women. I know that. But mm -hmm. how can I, like, detach myself from the situation? I mean, I know I shouldn't. Okay, ho hold on, Melissa. We, this is going to take more than a couple minutes. So we're going to take a little break here, all right? All right. And then we're going to get back to you. But this is an interesting topic, really. Yeah. yeah. This will be a, a lesson given to all the young ladies yeah. uh, of our program, uh, even the ones from uh, Nick. <laughs> Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That's the good doctor, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Next week, uh, Alec, oh, not Alec, Stephen Baldwin's going to be in here, and uh, we're going to ask him about uh, choking Kathy Griffin on uh, the uh, mole. He crapped in the bed. <laughs> I didn't see, uh, I'm guessing that was Stephen Baldwin. Hmm. I didn't see that uh, celebrity mole. Did you see that uh, celebrity mall? It was Wednesday, right? Yeah, that's you know it's a whole series, right? Hey, we'll yeah, we'll catch it next week. Yeah. No doubt about that. And uh, Corey Feldman is going to come in here, who was on the show that I was watching tonight. Which was a uh, surreal house. What is that? It's uh, w w w w w b. Yeah, they take all these. Uh, I think it's called surreal house. Yeah. And uh, they take all these uh, actors who are sort of, uh, you know, semi-infamous or had a had a had a past and uh, yes. not much of a future. Mm. And they got like uh, him, and uh, they got uh, Emmanuel Lewis and uh, MC Hammer and uh, Gabrielle Cateris from uh, 90210. And uh, <gasps> yeah, she's got kids. She got kids, but she got to leave them for a few days and go over to the Surreal House. All right. And uh, they put them all together. And Vince Neal from Motley Crue. And uh, put everyone together and uh, have them go shopping and stuff. <laughs> I don't know exactly what's going on with it yet. You know what, though? I, I, I figured out as I was watching it tonight, and I was enjoying it. If you take seven or eight people whose faces you sort of recognize. Mm -hmm. You'll watch. Oh, yeah, this guy was in that movie. Hey, that kid was Webster. Hey, that's Hammer Time guy. You take him, and you, just, and you put him in a big, beautiful house, and you just kind of watch. You'll watch, yeah. And what is that? I don't know what that is. It, they're all, like, standing in the kitchen, I think it's, it's and they're so talking, and you're like, oh, hold on, I, I want to hear what Vince Neal has to say about, uh, about the Yo! play. It, it's very similar to why we watch celebrities that behave out of control too. It's like we just we just like it's like a freeway accident. We just stare. It's it isn't even the celebrity part so much. I mean, it's a the really familiarity. If you took like seven or eight semi-attractive people and put them in uh, under one roof and it was a beautiful house, you'd watch. Just kind of watch. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why, but the fact that you know these people from somewhere. It uh, and then it's kind of weird too because these people that are sort of punchlines to jokes now, mm. like Emmanuel Lewis, you know he's Webster, and he's uh, you know they're sort of reading his credits off at the beginning. This guy's got three People's Choice Awards. You know what I mean? Like I'm making fun of Webster now, but I don't. You know what? What am I going to like? What, am I ever going to win a People's Choice Award? Mm -hmm. Like three. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, right. It's really, it's like some like some guy, and this is why it's great to be an athlete. Hmm. Because as, as, a, as an actor or entertainer, you can be MC Hammer. Yeah. You can sell uh, 10 billion records and make $10 billion, and then four years later, we can make fun of you. <laughs> but what it, is that? I know, but it, it's really, it's as, it's as if, you know, but if you're an athlete and you... You're the quarterback. You win a couple Super Bowls. That's it. That's it. All yeah. you do is slide that Super Bowl ring on and uh, show up at the party. You're like it's ISIS. It's a power. Right. You, power Ranger. Absolutely. Yeah. You can put on 700 pounds and start uh, drinking uh, Sterno, and people still bow at your feet. But that's sort of the sort of a warrior thing, you know? Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I know, but it is, it is really just amazing that... Uh, most of these people, like like I said, MC Hammer becomes sort of the bud of everyone's joke, and uh, this guy had a had a record that sold uh, 15 million copies or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's got to be worth something, doesn't it? Interesting, Melissa. 
Yeah. Hi. All right. So you have a problem where you get sexually active really easily, right? Right. And then once you do, you're super attached. That's right. And then you start obsessing and stalking and all that good stuff. Right. Um, well. Exactly. Yeah. How, how fast are you sleeping with these dudes? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say dudes, but, <laughs> yeah. Well, Gals? Yes, they are. But, um, <sighs> I don't know. Um, you know, guys are dogs, as you know. Sorry. I don't mean to be disrespectful. But they will say anything to, you know, get that one thing. And then once well, they but do, you listen, screwball, how? all the promises just go, you know. Hold on a second. Here's what I like. Hey, Drew, ask me uh, how, <laughs> how fast I'm sleeping with these guys. Yeah, how, how fast are you going to bed with these guys? Well, dudes? as you know, guys are dogs, <laughs> and they'll say anything to get that one thing. And then when they get that one thing, all right, is that really the answer to this question that I've asked? Melissa? Yeah, I, I just, I think I'm crazy. And then, yep. like, I'll give you a clear-cut example, okay? Um, I recently hooked up with this guy, you know, we had sex, and then he said he would call me back. He never did, and then I left him, like, 12 messages on his answering machine. That's crazy, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, and Why do you do these hookups if you know they're not going to go anywhere, and you need them to go somewhere? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think it's because, um, uh, I don't know, I'm adopted, and... Nope. How old were you when you were adopted? Um, five. Oh. What, yeah. what happened during those first five years? Um, in different foster homes. Oh, my God. Well, of course, of course, attachments are going to be yeah. very so different. I, I really don't have anyone, and so I have that attachment issue. Well, it's not the attachment issue. It's the abandonment issue. Is, is that what it is? And you, you have bad boundaries, and so you, you get sucked in real quickly, and you fuse with someone, and then you can't unattach. Right. It's and the, I, everything is perceived as a reenactment of the original abandonment. And you make all your, you set up all your relationships to reenact those traumas. So and it's like I choose the same. I know you, you're doing it over person. and over. It's the trauma, trauma, trauma. You're just so you're just re-traumatizing yourself over and over again. And I don't you, understand why I want to put myself through well, that. Well, because you know? the right side of your brain has been wired a certain way by those early experiences, and that's the way it is. You can try to choose to do something different, but the probability is with that kind of experience, that 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 part of your brain that is wired that way is going to sort of push you into these relationships that are abandoning. So, really, you've got to look into some treatment. You've got to, and you've got to hold, you have to have sort of a moratorium on relationships for a while. Right. Yeah, that's good. Don't look for guys to make you feel a certain <laughs> way about yourself. And, this is and... This is, this is, I mean, she's... Yeah, there's you, you issues here. Yeah. You've got to get some therapy. And, and number two, uh, and for all you listening, not all guys are dogs. <laughs> About 30% of guys are dogs. You just happen to hook up with those guys. Those are the guys. You, uh, a lot of you ladies, as a matter of fact, coincidentally, the ones who claim all guys are dogs are not interested in the non-dog guys. That's right. I mean, let's face it. Mm -hmm. Guys are horny. Let's, let's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're not. But just sort of picture the guys at your work, guys you know, guys you're friends with. The majority of them are sort of normal guys, good guys, mm -hmm. would be happy to meet somebody that they're attracted to and commit to a relationship, treat women right. Mm -hmm. Women, not, not, so, not so interested in that dude. Yeah. And uh, until you get interested in that dude, there's going to be trouble. But again, that's what attraction is all about, is trying to solve those early traumas. Right. And so she looks for the abandoning guy. Those are what attract her, and then she's in the abandon. Surprise. All right. Scott's 30. Scott? Yes. Yeah. What's up? Um, I'm trying to determine whether or not I have a sex addiction or just a sex drive that's way over the top. All right. Um, I, especially recently, I've been spending a lot of time on the Internet. I, I just have a really active sex drive, and it's starting to interfere I, in a way with my daily life because it's starting to consume me. The yeah. fact that I don't. I don't know, get enough, or I just don't get it, period. Yeah, are you, uh, you in a relationship? I am. I have been for almost 10 years. Ooh, 10 yeah. years. You yeah. married? No. 10 years, but not married. Correct. She doesn't want to get married? I'm um, same sex relationship. Gay. Oh, gay. Yes. It doesn't want to get, no. He doesn't want to get married? So are you in a monogamous relationship with him? Yes. Were you, were you sexually abused growing up? 
No. Um, wow, so you're gay and you just, uh, you're insatiable. And, and, your, it, and your partner does not want to engage in sex as much as you do? Not nearly, no. Not nearly. What is he good for? Uh, once every two months. Ooh. No. Was he a sex addict at one time? No. You sure? Positive. Yeah, here's a... Uh, it's every two it, months. It strikes me. Hold on a second, Scott. You know what strikes me about the gays? Uh, is we know from doing this show that uh, many folks that are gay were sort of pushed along in that direction through mm -hmm. some circumstances in the past. Mm -hmm. doesn't make them not gay now. Mm -hmm. I know people get offended by that. But just like... <clears throat> Just like you can be violent through being beaten around as a kid, yeah. or just as, as you can be smart from having parents that are school teachers or or uh, inclined to uh, you know play music or something musically inclined, whatever it is, you can get pushed along sexually in different directions mm -hmm. as well, depending mm -hmm. on these circumstances. And sometimes uh, gay folks were pushed along in these directions, mm -hmm. and so when you hook up, you might find a guy who's sort of uh, hypersexual. Mm -hmm. And another guy who's closed down, and you may find this with lesbians, and it strikes me as uh, potential trouble. The, the the trauma issues and its impact on sexuality, yeah. 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 You, could, you could be at other opposite ends of the poles right, here. Right. So, Scott. Yes. Your, your boyfriend, does he have issues? In well, I know that he has self-esteem issues, not generated by me by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah, but did he get... Uh, monkeyed with when he was younger or something? Not that I'm aware of, no. So uh, you're both just uh, naturally gay. <laughs> you can say that. Yeah. No domineering mom, huh? Huh? How's your mom? Domineering? No. Hmm. All right. Well, this is uh, biologically gay then, Born Scott. Gay. Born gay. <laughs> Born gay. Her life is to live gay. So that's why Scott sounds sort of normal, though he has a, an appetite. But if, if he's a 30-year-old guy who's with a partner who's... It's once every two months. Once every two months, he's got to uh, blow that steam off via the Internet. Maybe really what you're craving is just a relationship, and this guy has not given you that. No, I, we have a great emotional relationship, which is, you know, I'm not, I don't get, I don't drive my term, I don't get laid. Huh? What, do, what do you mean by a great emotional relationship? What does that mean? We connect very well on an emotional and intellectual level. We we have a great time when we're together. We I mean it's a very good relationship in many aspects. Of well, you mean a, a peace a peaceful relationship? And how good can it be when you, somebody has some very intense needs that aren't even being attended to? <laughs> That's the only need that isn't though. Yeah, but it's a pretty important one though. No, I understand that. But in isn't there some resentment on your part that this guy sort of depriving you of this? I mean, you're in this 10-year relationship, and he's, you know, six times a year kind of thing. Um, I don't know that I resent it, necessarily. Why don't you? Because I love him. Yeah, but you can love someone and resent them for what they're doing. You should. And, and, you, should, you, should be, you should be very upset that you're being ignored. I mean, doesn't it feel like you're being sort of shut out? Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that shouldn't feel good. I mean, you know, but I, I do attribute it to the fact that I know he has, um, for no yeah, reason but, at all. But really, Scott, having an intellectual... Body image issues, and I, and I know that's a big part of his problem. I know, but Scott, having an intellectual answer to everything doesn't change your feelings. Denying your feelings with all these explanations up in your head that doesn't change the feelings. Mm-hmm. I, I, I doubt you, you weren't sexually abused. You don't have the sort of recipe. There's that... We keep hearing that music and that voice going... Yeah, um, we haven't. You know, you don't have the sort of history that sets up sexual abuse so much. You're not an addict, and you have a relationship that is emotionally sounds empty. And you have these. You're a guy that has these real needs that are genuine and intimate, and they're being completely ignored. And you're trying to explain them away. Like, well, I understand. Oh, no, that, that that's going to come out in some way. And here's how it's coming out. You're, and you're, and him saying I'm not going to engage in this uh, intimacy with you is a statement. Oh yeah. It's not just isolated to physicality. I mean, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Scott, uh, instead of making yourself the heavy for uh, being sort of sexually compulsive, I would examine the relationship a little more closely and uh, wonder if you need to be you in should, for an 11th yeah, year with this guy. You should assert the need for mutuality. You should be able to say, hey, I need this in the relationship. I need a BJ. Whatever it is, he should be able to move in that direction at least. 
I need some felching. <laughs> Did you just say that was out of tape? That was me. Will you put that on real, please? Thank uh, you. I need, uh, I, I need mutuality. I need to be the cornholer and the cornholee. Okay? Yeah. All right. Dan? Hey, what's going on? You're 37. What's happening, brother? Yeah, just grooving. How you doing, Adam? I'm doing good. What's up? Um, my wife and I are right here. Uh, this is my, my third wife. Uh, we've been married now about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And we play, uh, we get the toys. You know, we're a pretty sexual couple. Mm -hmm. And But lately, about the last six, seven months, and uh, she's been secreting a, a white fluid that looks like a man's cum. Mm -hmm. From the vagina or from from the around. from the vagina? Uh, that's just a, that's uh, just we'll a, with a dildo or something. That's just a and discharge. Out, and man, will be just full of white cum. Mm -hmm. That's just a discharge. She, she maybe she has a yeast infection. Well, or something. something left over from the pool boy. Yeah, you know, at thirty-seven, you got to be able to keep those twenty-year-olds still going. Yeah, how old is she? Uh, she's twenty-six. Mm. Twenty-six. Yeah. Dan, what do you do? Something with cars? Me? Yeah. No, I'm actually a tattoo artist. Oh mm. man. Bikes with my motorcycles. I love motorcycles. There we go. Yeah, I got I got wheels from yeah. you. All right. So, uh, but you're an American motorcycle guy. Always. I don't like those little Jap Ninja bikes. Yeah. But you know, I got one of these. Uh, I got one of these big uh, Harley. One of these uh, big dogs. Uh huh. The big dogs are nice out of uh, Kansas. Yeah, it's nice. It's you know, it's like. Uh, 17, 1800 cc engine and it's just ridiculous motorcycle. It's obnoxious, yeah. but I don't know. I like those rice burners. I, I, the thing's too big. It's too heavy. The handlebars are way up in the air. Yeah, it'd be like the cruise when you get to our age, Adam. You know that. You just yeah. like cruise through life now. We've got still... all of our anxieties behind us now. All right. All right, so this is... Beer. Would, would beers have... I mean, she drinks a couple of beers every no, night. Dan, she has an infection. Get a gynecologist, let him treat it. It's not a big deal. Is that is that all that is? Yeah. I mean, it's, discharge. Yeah, it's yeah. coming out because of the contractions and the orgasm, but that's sitting it's up, up there. In the there? Infection comes out. Is that always that? Do do women? Does sometimes women have? Uh, they can have a normal discharge. At different terms in the cycle, there can be a normal discharge. It can be pretty intense too. Different colors. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's good times. I need some felching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris. Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Oh, not too much. <laughs> Just waiting to talk to you guys. All right. right. Here we are. Okay. Recently, I've been having uh, some, like, kind of kidney and kind of like, it seems, it feels kind of like back towards the kidneys. And then I'm just wondering whether it's muscles or, and then also up towards, like, like the liver, kind of up towards rib cage and everything like that. And your back? Um, yeah. And in the front. And why don't you have? Why don't you see a doctor? Why? Well, I, I don't know. I I just taken like a lot of protein. Not that it was something to do with that. No. What? Uh, Are you lifting weights? Yeah. Maybe just hurt your. Like maybe just hurt. Just hurt your back. Mm, no, it's not that. I I've hurt my lower back, but. Well, it's cancer. <laughs> what? Well, what do you what do you think it is? And you said you hurt your lower back. That could yeah. be it. Mm, no, because. I mean, like, the pain is, like, more up, upper. Chris, there's about 800 things this could be. Somebody needs to examine you, start a workup. It's, it's just, we, I'm not going to go through a list of 800 possible diagnoses without even any clue which direction to go because we have no objective data. Go see a doctor and get this evaluated. It's probably nothing. Drew. Yeah. You know when you were younger and you'd, you'd, be, you'd be running or jogging and you get that stitch in your side? Yeah. How come you don't get that stitch I, in your side when you're old? I've wondered myself that. I don't know. I'm glad you've wondered that because yeah. I was wondering that. Yeah. You get it from walking. You walk too far all of a sudden. Ugh. It was so weird about, uh, it was like age, age, 12. age, age, age 12 yeah. to uh, 19. You start jogging a little bit. And all of a sudden you get that stitch. Hey, what is that? That pinch right, right side. side. Right side. Or right side. Yeah. Whatever. I still get it all the time. You get it? Yeah. yeah. We take steroids, though. Yeah, you're on the juice. That's like steroids, that's yeah. why. What are you talking about? You're on the juice. You, uh, you're eating hockey pucks. Do I look like I'm on steroids? That's pretty cool. No, only your hair, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't get that as an adult. You get everything else. No, you're right. Why not the stitch? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? All right. Let's talk to... Uh, could that be... Uh, you know, I mean, think how dehydrated you were all the time back no, then. No, you know. Probably has something to do with the metabolic activity of the liver.
There was probably a little. No, uh, okay. Crazy no. building proteins and stuff. But and think, think. It's think, all being torn down when you're our age. But think how you would never drink water. No, I, I, on the contrary, I drink like a, I, a crazy water drinker when I was a kid. Yeah, but okay, but look at it this way: when you were a kid, forget. I might have to kick my dad in the nuts one more time. But when you were a kid, you would go to the beach. Let's say you're 13 years old mm -hmm. or whatever. You'd go to the beach. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any. I mean, like you wouldn't bring anything. You bring a towel. Maybe bring a radio. You wouldn't have a cooler, would you? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to kill my parents. <laughs> like, God, am I going to kill them? Oh, yeah. What was in that cooler? Liquids. <sighs> yeah. Good times. Yeah, anyway, back depressed. to Chris. I mean, Chris, so Chris it could be, it, you know, it could be a tumor or something. Could, but it's probably musculoskeletal. It could be kidney stones. It could be gall. I mean, it could be... Who brought bowel, the cooler? Who anything. brought the cooler when you went to the beach? It's worse. We go to somebody's house at the beach. And they bring a cooler out to the yeah, sand. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Mata. Hi. Hey. You're 19. What's up? Pretty traumatic experience tonight. Um. Yeah. Yeah. What about me with no cooler? Beach. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. And what happened with you? I was doing homework at my school. I go to college, and it was not that late at night. Maybe eight o'clock. It was in a like, you know, well-lit building, normal. There were a fair amount of people around. And the guy just randomly, like, sat down at my table. And after a few minutes, he started talking to me. And when I looked up, he was masturbating under the table. And he stood up and just, just it was really... No one saw this? There was a janitor, like, in the next room. And he said he didn't see him. This this was where she was doing her homework? Was yeah. Library? library, yeah. No, it was just one of the class buildings. Oh, what, was this person a student? No, I don't think so. He was older than, like, students usually are and just kind of scruffy. I just didn't think anything of him when he sat down. I didn't even notice him. How did you know he was masturbating? Because I could see his hand moving, and then I uh, figured out what he was doing, so I just left my stuff and got up and started walking away. And, and then he stood up and kind of followed me, and so I screamed and I ran to a classroom where I knew there would be people. And what happened? He left. When he stood up and followed you, what was he doing? He was wearing, like, he, like, pulled his short leg up so that you could see it. Yeah, yeah. And just walking after me. Okay. Are with, you, it, with it out? With it, yeah, pull. yeah. All right. I mean, there there are people out there that do this. It, but, it's like, a my issue is just that I'm feeling, like, really... Yeah, but you feel, well, you feel violated. And, yeah, and really angry. And, you know, my boyfriend was there, and so he took me, and we filed a report. But I just, I feel like I should do something more, and I'm feeling really upset about Where it. Where was your boyfriend? He was in the classroom. He had a class. I was just waiting for him. Oh, I see. And you were just nearby? Yeah. What, what more would you like to do? Um, like, I know that I would recognize this person if I saw them again. I mean... I remember him quite clearly, and mm -hmm. I just want to go and, like, look through the mug shots, but I think that's kind of silly and, like, obsessive. Yeah. Well, why? I don't know. What's wrong with looking through a few mug well, shots? Well, the guy's sick, and he's going to he's gonna get caught in any event. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, well, mm. I know that, I mean, <laughs> I'm a big true crime fan, so I know that, like, this kind, usually they don't turn into rapists because they're so cowardly, but... Mm. It's, just it's not their cowardly. They just they just do it. They, they get they get off on doing this. And expose them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not their bag. Yeah, listen. You you shouldn't take any of this personally. Well, I don't. It, it's just upsetting. Yeah, well, that's normal. I mean, I, you, you, you get you get a little post traumatic yeah. stress reaction from this he, kind of thing. You yeah. feel out of control and powerless, yeah. and he won't he's, sleep right for a couple of days. You know, he's a tormented loser. You know. Yeah. I mean, you should almost feel sorry for the guy. If you see him again, you get get the you know get the security right away. That's all. Yeah. And tell and yeah. That was the hardest part because when the janitor said he didn't see it, I just thought maybe I'm insane. You know, because they all looked at me like. Really? No, no. Ten feet away, and I was like... No, and the guy, the guy took off, right? Yeah. No, this happens. This happens. So, yeah. Okay. All right, but listen, he's he's just some old loser. You're you're young. You got a boyfriend. But also realize college, for about a week, good. you're going to feel funny. You're going to have a little panic and anxiety, oh, and mood's going to be up normal. and down, and that's normal. Yeah. Okay, because I'm feeling really upset, and like I been trying to sleep and right, well, it's well, going to be hard to sleep for a couple right. of days. Yeah. Right. Well, you shouldn't be too upset. Were you ever traumatized in the past? Um, no, not 
not really, not yeah. in that way. Because if you if you had previous trauma, sometimes you can get post traumatic stress reactions that are real intense that are sort of reawakening old traumas um, from relatively. I think so. I've had a pretty boring, happy life. All right, no, no, you're gonna be all right. Just just try to relax and don't don't get, don't get over involved in this. It's okay. gonna take a few days to settle down. And okay. Do if it does, you know, me mental health services at your school. Hmm. Yeah. I always thought this was a victimless crime, this uh, beating off in mm -hmm. public. Mm -hmm. Lord knows uh, I've had my brushes with it. Doing it? Or what guy's doing it at you? Uh, I was on the... Uh, Receiving end? Business end. Of, yeah. yeah. Is that, that, that the, you were referring the to the penis time? penis was attached yes. to me, yeah. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. That's what you mean by receiving. Yeah. I've gotten some off on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I wasn't excited. I didn't want anyone to see, though. I know. You weren't you know, waiting until somebody drove up next to you and then... Yeah, no, my thing was like, listen, I, I'm not going to be home for another 15, 20 minutes. What, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? I don't want anyone to see, but you know, i got business to attend to. You understand my dilemma, Drew, yes? Oh, your wife must be so proud. Yes. Yeah. The good doctor, Dr. Drew, phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Let's uh, get back to the phones and speak to Melissa, who's 16. Melissa? Hey. Hey. What's up? What's up, girl? Um, well, the couple that called in just a little bit ago, um, you said that, or they said that the, the, she had a discharge or something. She had something on the, the toys that they inserted when yeah. some excess of stuff on yeah, it. Yeah, it kind of looked like a guy's cum. Yeah. Well, um, i gotten that before, or, like, I've do it, it happens sometimes, mm -hmm. but, like, I know I don't have any infection or anything. How do you know? Well, because I've had one before. <laughs> You've had infections before? Well, I've had a yeast infection. Yeah, but there are other infections that can kind of come and go. And but it's been like that for, I mean, I've gotten it for a while. I mean, right. ever since, like, whenever I started masturbating. The This discharge? Well, yeah, it's been like that. I mean, mm -hmm. people have noticed it before, like guys, when they've gone down on me, they're like, wow, but I've never had any complaints or anything. Well, you mean you you have a you have a bunch of fluid that comes out when you orgasm? Well, yeah, it's like, it's white, kind of creamy, like, yeah. But a whole bunch of it comes out? Well, enough. I mean, it gets on, it's on, like, the, the, the my vibrator. On the, on the, but it doesn't come flying out. Well, no, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's normal discharge. Like we said, it could be just something that very, the, the kind of normal discharge that goes throughout the cycle. And in her case, though, it was something that it came on abruptly all of a sudden and she never had it before. Uh -huh. And that's why we said maybe it's an infection. What do you do with the vibrator? Do you give the wipe under the underarm before you put it back in uh, the Crown like, Royal sack? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sanitary. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Now, the vibrator, you put it up in you? Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, don't just sort of work the uh, the button there, huh? Well, of course, but, you know, double mm -hmm. action, whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. 16. Yep. I've called them before. You're moving right along, What did we talk about last time? My uh, asshole, uh, jerk father. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's payback, Dad. Yeah. Um, and I have another question. Yeah. Where is that jerk father of yours? I'm sleeping. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but uh, I have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this about my dad, actually, kind of. Mm -hmm. He is tends to be, you know, pretty abusive. And, um, I mean, it hasn't happened recently, but, like, the, the, the concept of, like, violent sex, you know, just is really arousing to me. And I just thought, like, why? Because, I mean, wouldn't it be the total opposite if my dad is basically, you know? No. No? No. No. Well, it, it's basically that it, there's a lot of ways to think about this, but the trauma at the hands of your parents becomes reenacted in your sexual relationships routinely. Was your dad physically abusive to you? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's how you end up in S&M, well, having a parent just kind of physically abuse you. Oh, so I guess. It, it's normal, I guess. By it's you're right. It's a usual it's a norm, outcome. Normal it's, it, reaction. It, it wires your brain literally into, mm, into needing that kind of thing. It's a, no one really knows what is going on exactly. I, one of my suspicions is that that it's so it's so overwhelmingly arousing that it sort of sets in those needs for that level of arousal in order to be sexually aroused. Mm. I don't mean that the arousal of the beating is is sexually arousing, but it sort of maybe burns out other areas of your brain that have to be sort of adjusted in order to tolerate the intensity of the experience. Right. All right. Richard? Hi. You're 22? Yep. What's up? Oh, well, my girlfriend ain't putting on as much. 
Mm-hmm. How little is she putting out? Twice a month. Twice a month? Yeah. Yeah. And we used to, when we first started dating, we used to have sex three times a week. Yeah. And how long have you been together? A year and a half. Mm-hmm. Have you spoken to her about this? Yeah. And I found out that she was uh, molested when she was younger. Uh, mm -hmm. And that sex actually hurts her. Oh, boy. She feels mm -hmm. no pleasure out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you can understand why she'd back it down yeah. this month. Yeah. You got a tough row to hoe there, uh, Richard. So what's your plan? Well, I, well, I was hoping you could tell me what I could do to get more sex or... <laughs> Well, roofies, chloroform. What else, Drew? That's about it. Hey, uh, just have a look at it. Hey, the yeah. fact that she's doing it twice a month is pretty good for somebody that's been abused. Yeah. And that it hurts. Can you get some oral sex from her? Well, she doesn't really like doing oral sex unless she gets some sex out of it. I mean, she feels good for like the first 10 minutes, yeah. but then after that, like, she says her vagina starts getting tighter and tighter. She, and he, he's not talking about you doing it to her. Pardon me? I'm talking about her giving it to you. Yeah. Well, she gives me oral sex, and then, then she wants sex after that. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that doesn't sound like someone is completely closed down. Yeah, can she give you oral sex uh, in between the two-week intervals that you have intercourse? No. She Either she goes all out, or she doesn't do it at all. All right. Uh, boy. Turn over all the cards. Yeah. Really, all you can do is sort of... Kind of work on it. Yeah. Just yeah. sort of slowly get her to trust you and... Don't... don't I don't know. If, don't to pound on her about this. Don't to kind of be on her. She'll, she'll shut down even further if you really sort of are constantly badgering her about this. Yeah. Yeah. It'll go from bad to worse if you push. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's rich. Just, I don't know. Try to get her. Try to get her to see your point of view. To realize that you have these needs and it's kind of uncomfortable. And maybe she can kind of be mutual in the relationship. And like, like we were talking that gay couple earlier. What was that guy's name? Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> All gay guys are named Bruce, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. It, it's tough. If there's sexual abuse and person sort of numb from the waist down, I, I just don't know what you can do about it. Mm -hmm. Cynthia? Hi. You're 17. What's up? Hi. Um, I'm just wondering what your guys' opinion is on um, sex education versus absence education. I saw um, a thing on Don Don Donahue program tonight, and it made me really angry because they were all talking about how the absence education was so good. And I just wanted to call in and tell them that, you know, getting um, information out to kids is just so important. And I just right. feel like your guys' What you guys thought of that? It's well, I, the, you're in Washington D.C., right? Washington State. Washington State. In Washington D.C., there's a group called Advocates for Youth, and they uh, lobby on this issue very commonly. And you can call them if you want to get involved with it. Their concern is not that abstinence is a inappropriate message or that abstinence education is a bad idea. Yeah. The problem with abstinence education, the way it's funded, is you're not allowed to answer any questions pertinent to anything else about sexuality other than the only viable alternative in, for sex. Uh, yeah, is sex in, a, in marriage. You, you can't talk about it's, it's, contraception you or... Can't, if, a, if, a, if a child comes up to you and goes, you know, how do I get HIV? I'm contemplating having sex with an IV drug user. You can't answer it. I know, you and, can't it's, talk. and it's supported by the government. Right, it's, so it's, it's a censorship <laughs> program, and that's the problem with it. To put abstinence as, as the goal and to build it up as a primary message in the training is excellent, but to censor everything else is, uh, ooh... Yeah, it's sacrificing like people. They're trying to, you know, push, you know, sh say that, you know, this is the only right way to be in your life and these yeah, are our morals. And this I, is I understand that, but to, to, yeah. that's fine if they also allow you to ask questions and educate you about the alternatives and help, yeah. you, help you negotiate I reality. Think, well, yeah. it, it's it, here's the problem is it's it's not a realistic approach exactly. to this problem. It's it, here's Here's what it is. It's sort of like... We get into this with the junk food stuff. You know, we have to outlaw McDonald's. We have to outlaw soda. There can be no soda on campus and this kind of thing. Kids aren't going to respond very well to outlawing stuff that they crave. Right. You know what I'm saying? Drew, over yeah. here, buddy. I, I'm listening. Drew's reading something. You know, I'm, I'm talking I, now. I can read and listen to you. No, no, you can't. No, you can't. Over oh, here. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, hey, listening. eyes. Eyes. Right here. <laughs> right here. 
So, outlawing stuff that kids sort of biologically crave mm -hmm. is uh, never going to be a great plan. But what you should do, and I, I think you should do the same with, because there is this recent controversy about the diets and the kids, kids are all obese and all this kind of stuff, is, mm -hmm. is you should say, look, this is a part of life. This is around. This mm -hmm. is an everyday thing. But you know what? You, you, you can eat a burger. Then you gotta, then you gotta happens. run a few laps. And here's what happens. And here, here's yeah. what happens. Here's the negative things that can happen. Eating and, one, is it one burger and, gonna kill you? No. And if you happen to be hungry and sitting outside of McDonald's, we're gonna suggest some behaviors that might help you resist making bad choices. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And here's, uh, here's the consequences. And then here's what you're gonna need to do. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Drew, did you blow gas? Oh my God. Oh my God. Speaking of uh, things we need to, help, oh my God. Oh pay, pay my for last God. Night. No. Oh my God. What about your Hippocratic oath, Drew? Just finish up with it. Hey, hey we're adults here. Adam, relax. That's not being so immature. Come on, <laughs> let's uh, finish up with Cynthia here. Oh, wow. No, it's sweet. I just wanted to bring up that that point to you guys and kind of no. throw it out there for other people. Yeah, open that door, Drew. Oh my God. Now well, listen. Uh, these the abstinent people are uh, full of crap as usual. They're just for people who didn't get laid, and they don't want other people getting laid. It's more of that religious stuff. That's fine. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I don't need the school monopolizing the kids' time, putting the condom on the cucumber either. Mm -hmm. It's a couple of basics they need to learn, and that's it. They don't need. There's need to be lesbian and gay groups. They don't have to do a whole bunch of sensitivity training. It's like listen, put the condom on. Here's what birth control can do. Here's the morning after pill. Chick, oh, true. Is there, is there more? Is that more? Oh my God! A couple of handful of that crap, and then get back to the basics. Mm. So, I, like I said, you went to the little Lord Fauntleroy School for albino hemophiliacs, but I went to a public school. Wait, they didn't teach you how to fill out a goddamn envelope, right? Like I, I, everyone, you know, half the people I graduated high school with, they they couldn't fill out a check, like just on a checking book, you know? Yeah, you didn't. He didn't know how to apply for a credit card or or go down to the uh, s go down you know when you turned eighteen and register for the draft or it's just serious basic fundamental how to put air in your car tires. There's not a female I know who knows how to put air in her car tires. You, you know what I mean? They go through their entire life like, sir, could you help me with this guy? You know, why are why, we really no class for this? I, I know it sounds it's it sounds almost. Uh, the you know, juvenile or something, or, or the, this is not education. Yeah, it is for about 90% of the people on this planet. Mm. And you know how to fill out a checkbook and put air in their tires. I, I'd rather them focus on that and a little less on the lesbian groups, but this abstinence stuff is crap. It's never going to work. Not a bad plan. I mean, hey, I'm with you. Tell, yeah. tell teenagers to stop screwing. That's great. Hey, tell them to stop drinking soda. Yeah. Tell them to stop eating uh, no, McNuggets. No pot, no beer. No pot, no beer. Mm -hmm. All right, settled. Oh, oh, uh, what about juvenile crime? No, no crime. No ecstasy, no, crime. No, ex no crime. No crime. No driving fast. No, no speeding. No accidents. No, no speeding. speeding. All right, well, we're done. <laughs> we're now living in a utopia. Can't talk about anything else, though. We'll be back. the time real fast. The time, 11.47. That's 12 minutes and 55 seconds away from the bewitching hour at the top of the hour. 12 minutes. Let's check the temps real fast around the south line. Bellflower checking in 55. Cerritos, 54. Pasadena, Chile, 49. Compton checking in 51 degrees. Arlington, 49. Southgate, Van Nuys, your info checking in 49 degrees. Kill me, Anderson. Kill me. Go. Go. <laughs> 50,000 watt flames. Uh. All right, let's check the freeways real fast. Slow and go on the 405.
Alive, look out for life with the lines of brake line. Check the time real fast. 11.47 and 12 minutes and 5 seconds away from the top of the hour. I'm H. Rock Coleman, good part over there, Dr. Drew. David, you're on the line. What's happening? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, I got a question. About uh, six months ago, yeah. uh, when I was uh, with my girlfriend, it was like a little bit after we broke up. Uh, oh, okay, well, seven. Hold on a second there, caller. Bellflower checking in at 49 degrees. Cerritos, 51. Pasadena coming in at 51. Cops at 47. I'm late at 45. Southgate, Bellflower, Sherman Oaks. Blah, 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 You're with your girlfriend. Uh, yeah, and uh, we broke up, and like a little while after, <laughs> um, she told me that she was pregnant. What? No, oh, got a bun in the oven. <laughs> well, you must have dropped around at least once. <laughs> Arlena, 55. All right. Okay. Um, I got really spooked, and I was like, she w she wasn't gonna tell me because like we kind of got in an argument. I mean, we were friends after. And what did she do? Call her. Call her. Call her. Wait a minute. Call her. Call her. Did she have the baby? Uh, no. Uh, we went to uh, some place to check on it, and um, she she wasn't pregnant. And it was, was she? <laughs> What? <laughs> Check time real fast. 11.49 in 25 seconds. 10 minutes and 35 seconds away from the time of the hour. Straight up. This is the fastest 11 and a half minutes of radio. Bellfire checking in 49. Surreal is coming in at 53. Pasadena checking in 51. Cops in at Chile 41. Our lead is coming in at some, uh, Southgate. Was the Van Was she lying to you? Is she not pregnant? Uh, no, I mean, she took the test and, like, you know, one of those uh, home tests. Yeah. Written her oral. <laughs> Serena's 45. And what? They said that it was probably the stress that probably, you know, got rid of her. Well, I'm saying, I'm seven. But, uh, after right. that, I got really spooked about... Well, uh, I'm out of time. Oh, yeah, well, well. I have uh, safe sex. And no, that's not kind of birth control or anything for guys. Blah, blah. There, there will be one of these days, but not right now. Blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you what I do. Just, just the condom. I'll do drills. I'm going to drop and trowel. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Pull out. <laughs> Bellflower checking at 49. Cerritos coming in at 51. 405. Drew slow in lanes. Look out. Look out for brake lights. There's blah, 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 blah. And a four level interchange. Blah, 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 blah. 101. Stop and go. Blah, 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 Robert, you're on the call. You're 21 years old. Is that up? Yes, uh, I have a question for Dr. Ruth. Say uh, Yeah. I started going out with a girl re recently, three months. Well, she told me that she has uh, an epilepsy. Blah, 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 blah. I, she says that she has like a mild case. Uh, she started having epilepsy the first attack at 13. Yeah. I was just wondering, Dr. Drew, if you could tell me what the epilepsy is. I know that you have attacks, but I mean, what are the long term effects? No, not necessarily any long term effects. She's on medication that will control it probably her whole life. It's a seizure disorder, it's a small area of irritation in the brain that well, causes that a rhythmic, it's sort of an. I'm all right. It causes a diffuse oh. electrical discharge throughout the brain, and then when your brain is, is discharging that way electrically, you become unconscious. Oh, oh, these, oh, these oh, 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 oh. Let's check the time real fast. Well, I'll tell you one thing about this, Broadway. Well, like, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, one of the uh, she makes a hell of a martini. <laughs> Dizzle for chisel, dizzle. <laughs> Becky, Becky. Yes. Hey. Hello? Hey. Mm-hmm. Huh? What's going on? 
Hello? Hello? <laughs> 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 oh, what's that? Hey, mate. Hey, 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 my parents and I, we have like a really good relationship and everything. The really good relationship. <laughs> Come here and give me a, a little too much information. <laughs> but the problem is that like they tell me I'm a really good student and I've really like not done anything bad. But they tell me um, that they trust me like 110 percent, but they don't let me do anything. And it's getting really frustrating. <laughs> Let me tell you a little story about it. My dad, my mom, high school, carpet cleaning, football, North Hollywood, parents, one bird apartment, three buddies, no dental insurance, no credit card, no medical, but look at me now. <laughs> All right, kitties. Well, that's the show, and that's the week. Wow, you're talking strangely now. What are you talking about? Uh -huh. I want to thank uh, Brian for doing a great job on the phones all week. I want to thank uh, Tara, don't call me Tara, goddammit, for doing a wonderful job on the phones, the coffee, the water, and all that stuff. Junior producer Lauren for... Uh, Mainly just obsessing on Tori Amos and not being too involved with the show. <laughs> and screwing everything up in here all the time. Still nice to oh have. Gosh. And of uh, course, uh, the uh, if Liberace was bi instead of gay and uh, work potentiometers instead of the ivories, Keyboard, yes. yeah, it would, be, it would be Engineer Anderson. That's who he would be. So I want to thank Engineer Anderson <clears throat> and, of course, Producer Ann. Until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo. Robert, you're good. You're 21 years old. I thought, huh? This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.